Welcome back to the GeForce channel. In this video we make a see-through 3D printed board. In this video I'm gonna try to 3D print a surfboard from my home with a small 3D printer. The first thing you need when 3D printing is a 3D file. I found one online by some legend who made this 46 piece 3D printable file. I downloaded it straight away and tried to print the first parts of it. It took a lot of tuning with the printer to get the first parts right. Because all the parts have complex curves, I had to put them on their side. That worked the best for me. I had to tilt all the parts a little bit. That helped with adhesion to the bed because of the full support structure on the underside. I wanted to print this surfboard with a PETG material because of its strong properties and it's more heat resistant than the commonly used PLA material. PETG is a lot harder to print, so I had to tune my printer to suit the material. After I got my printer dialed in, it's time to do some mass production of 3D printed parts. It takes around 12 hours to do one part, so uh, that's 52 times 12, you can do the math. It took me the whole summer to print all the parts, but now I have to glue them together. I did some research on the internet and it showed me that an epoxy based glue is the best way to go. So, let's get gluing. Now that I've glued all the pieces into two halves, it's time to put them together. The 3D file is designed so that you can put a stringer in between the two halves. I'm gonna use fiberglass to connect the two pieces of board and make a strong stringer. First I have to sand the plastic to make sure the epoxy sticks to it. Then I add the epoxy to the fiberglass and clamp the two halves together with pegs that you normally use for hanging your laundry. Now that the two halves are glued together and reinforced by a fiberglass stringer, I have to think of a way to let the board breathe. When this board is finished, it consists of a lot of hollow chambers. The air in these chambers will expand when the board gets hot, potentially causing a delamination of the fiberglass. So I pierced holes in every chamber with a hot nail. I later found out that a soldering iron works way better. Now the air eventually can get out of the board by a vented leash plug that I put in later. The frame's now finished, so it's time to start the lamination process. I'm gonna do this tail piece over the fin boxes. First I'm gonna wet out the fiberglass on this plastic sheet and then lift it somehow onto the board. And while it's still wet, I'm gonna cut it so I have to clean my scissors afterwards pretty quick. We'll have to see if it works. first lamination test worked out pretty well. My plan worked, but I left too much epoxy in some spots. You can see here some dimples in the lamination. I am now confident enough to laminate the whole bottom of the board. Laying down the cloth onto the frame was quite hard on my own. So for the deck lamination, I'm gonna ask my girlfriend to help me. With the help of my girlfriend, I eventually got the cleanest result.
After one layer of four ounce glass, the floating pieces of fiberglass are not strong enough. So I'm gonna do another layer. So I'm gonna sand the glass to make sure the epoxy sticks and I'm putting in the vented leaf plug. I prepare the board for a normal way of glassing and start the glassing process. The epoxy cured for 12 hours and then I cut away the excess fiberglass along the tape line. During the sanding of the tail area on the bottom of the board, I sanded through some high spots in the fiberglass causing some holes in the board. I quickly had to patch it up with some fiberglass again. After fixing all the holes in the bottom of the board, it's time for a second layer of fiberglass. Add some epoxy to the board so I can sand it later on in this process so the board is getting a very flat finish. This is called a sand coat. After sanding the sand coat I add a last layer of epoxy and that is called the hot coat. It's the final coat of epoxy on the board. That will be sanded with very fine grit and after that your board is finished. When I tried putting the screws in to secure the fins, the plastic of the printed fin boxes immediately broke. So I decided to glass the fins in the fin boxes so they are fixed permanently. I polished the board off camera and I'm now showing you the finished product. It's almost time to serve this board, but first I have to make it grippy. In my opinion, it's very ugly to put wax on this beautiful new board, so I tried an alternative. I reached out to Van der Waal and they kindly sent me a package of hexagon grip stickers that you can put on your deck. It looks great because it's see-through, but I hope it provides the same grip as normal wax. There's one way to find out. Let's hit the water. This is a typical Dutch surf session with choppy windy waves. This is my brother on this parrotfish that I made for him. And I'm catching 
some waves on the 3D printed board and it surfs. I will do a full surfboard review on this channel after some sessions with some better waves. In these conditions the board didn't work very well because you can see it's very slow, it doesn't drop in by itself. If you compare my speed with the other guys in the water I was the slowest by far. That's also because I'm a little bit afraid to pump on this board because I'm afraid to damage the weak plastic structure inside the board. When I got out of the water and picked up the board, I noticed that there was water in one side of the board. No. Look at this little beauty. But no. There's water inside. Shit. No! I found the origin of the leak. It's somewhere in these fin boxes. Fuck. So I have to try and drain this board, then fix the leak, then surf it again. I hope to see you guys soon in the next video. Thanks for watching!